upon these doors. In the mighty name of Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We love you, excellent God. We love you, excellent God. We love you, excellent God. We love you. We love you, excellent God. We love you. We love you, excellent God. We love you, excellent God. We love you, excellent God. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord God. We love you, we love you. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. Reveal yourself to us in Jesus' mighty name. Reveal yourself to us today. Let your word go forth like a hammer that will break rocks in pieces. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give praise to you, Lord. We give praise to you. We glorify your name. There's none like you. There's none like you nowhere in all the world. You are God, and beside you there is no other God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you for this day. Thank you for, for, for giving us the opportunity to use your name, to move in your name, to move in the power of your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us understanding of your word. Father, we cry out to thee for help even the more. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, help us, help us, help us. Help us as we explore your word today. Help us as we explore Colossians chapter 3 today. Verses 1 through 13, give us understanding. Give us revelational insight, revelational knowledge, Father. Concerning your word, in Jesus' mighty name, speak to us. We leave no nothing to chance. We leave nothing to chance. We leave nothing to chance. Speak to us, Heavenly Father. Let your word go forth like a hammer that break rocks in pieces. Let righteousness run down like a mighty stream and show your people their transgressions, house of Jacob their sins. Father, speak to us today. Speak to us today through your word, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, all that we might encounter you. Oh, that we might encounter you, Father. That we might encounter you. That we might encounter you. Let this moment be a moment of encounter. In Jesus' mighty name. Let this moment be a moment of great encounters. Hallelujah. Oh, that we might encounter you. Father, that we might encounter you. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your divine way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, excellent God. Have your way. Have your way, marvelous Savior. Have your way. Have your way in this. 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 Have your way. Have your way. Have your way here. Have your way here. Have your way in this. In the name of Jesus, have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we we seek your face. We seek your face. When we can do nothing but, oh, Lord God, your will must be done. When we can do nothing but say, Father, we surrender to you, your will, your way. We surrender tonight in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Oh, Jesus, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak to us. Speak to us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we long for thee. We long for thee. We long. We desire you in the name of Jesus. We do not lean to our own understanding. We do not lean to our own selves. Tonight we press into you, God, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, hey God, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we love you and we give you the praise, glory and the honor is yours, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh we give you praise, Father. Oh, we give you praise, Heavenly Father. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. 
speak to us tonight through thy word, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Speak to us through thy word. Speak to us through thy word. Speak to us through thy word in the name of Yeshua. Oh, Father, that thy word, hallelujah, will come alive in us. Your word must come alive in us. Your word must come alive in us in Jesus' name. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for how you're doing it. Speak, Lord. Speak, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, speak to us. Speak to us, Holy Spirit of God. Speak to us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, great glorious Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the thing that you're doing. And the thing that you're doing, they are indeed marvelous in our eyes. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. God bless him to everyone. God bless him to you. Pastor Cooper, God bless him to you. Murders Baker, God bless him to you. Layla Anderson, Zeddy Anderson, God bless him to you. All of you, the Lord's people, Jennifer Harris, amen. The lifeline here, God bless him to you, lifeline. God bless him to all that are on the line with us today. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for this moment. I thank God for what he's doing. He's doing marvelous things in our life, and we are just honored to be here. In the name of Jesus, we thank God for this time. We're going to go to the Word. Diamond, I see you. God bless you to you. We're so delighted that you are able to be here with us. Amen. We trust that this Word of the Lord will become strength to all of His people. Amen. In the name of the Lord, Jesus. When the things you're trying to kill won't die, leave it, mortify it. That's what we're going to talk about today. How about that? When the things you're trying to kill won't die, our answer, leave it, mortify it. That's right. That's what we're going to talk about today. Leave it, mortify it. Leave it, mortify it. I was always for a long time under the impression that to mortify was to kill, just kill a thing because you're mortifying it. It's got to die. Uh-huh. Jennifer Harris, I, I was under that impression that when you kill, uh, when you mortify it, that means it is dead. It is dead. It is dead. Uh-huh. Then if that was the case, I've seen a lot of dead things get up. <laughs> Uh, for some reason, I've seen a whole lot of dead things get up. And uh, so today, let's, we're going to explore Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. When the things you're trying to kill won't die, leave it and mortify it is what we're going to talk about. We've been trying to kill that thing. For years, we've been trying to kill it. We've been trying to kill it, Stephen Hanks. We're trying to cut his head off. And it keep growing back. Yeah, we've been, it's been joining itself back together. Yeah, yeah. So we, we want we want to look at this and cry out, Oh Lord, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Oh God, what do we do? When the thing we're trying to kill won't die. Leave it and mortify it. Father, give us give us the grace to Teach your word as you would have us do so. And cause us to do so from the intent that Paul, when he wrote this scripture, allow us to see it from his perspective. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Each one of you are here today because the Lord has purpose for you. He has design for you. He has great things in store for each one of you. You are here because I'm telling you, God is working a plan in your life. And he who, he who has begun a good work in you is going to perform it to the day of Jesus the Christ of God. Yeah, we're going to talk about this thing today. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. What is the meaning of mortified? To mortify. And, and I got some things that we want to talk about because it says mortified, therefore you remember. I know I'm jumping to verse 5. And, and, and this verse 5 is the reason why we're going this route. 
But before we get to verse 5, let me go back. Matter of fact, I'll just, I'll come back to my purpose for mortified, to mortify. Uh, lesson number 5, Colossians 3, 1 to 13. We expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. And uh, just as you know that we have this topic, the power of the power to mortify it. Uh -huh. it, it is strolling right before your camera. Uh, the power to mortify it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Stephanie Bush, good seeing you, but the power to mortify it. Yeah, yeah we, we're gonna we're gonna look at this, and also let's go to our sub, uh, our subtopic. We have a subtopic: the power of shame can give you the the advantage over your weaknesses. The power of shame can give you the advantage over your weakness. The power of shame. The power of shame can give you the advantage over your weakness. How about that? When you use it right, the power of shame can give you the advantage over your weakness. Let, 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 let us let, let us look at the scripture here. Let, let us look at the scripture. Let us let us go and let us look at what uh, um, what the scripture has to say for, to us. If ye then, if, if, everybody's not, if ye then be risen with Christ. Everybody not risen with him. Their minds in the gutter. Yeah, yeah. If ye then be risen with him, your mind should be where he is. Your mind should be there. Your thoughts should be there. Your, your intent should be there. Your hunger, your, 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 your thirsting should be right there with him. If ye then be risen with him, risen with Christ, you want to set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. If ye then be risen with Christ, if ye then be risen with him, see those things which are above where, where, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God, my God. And right here, if you would just pause with us, Dana Gomez, we good. It's so good seeing you <clears throat> as you're doing your evangelism work there in in uh, in in England, England, Amen. Uh, as you're doing your evangelism work in England, we thank God for you. Amen. I'm able to look at the broadcast that you're doing, and as you're in the streets of England. Uh, 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 just sharing the word of God. We, we thank God for you, honor you, honor you. Amen. All the way from, all the way from Brazil, went over to England to witness and to share Christ with some of the people there. So keep doing what you're doing. We thank God for you. If ye then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. When you're risen with him, your mind is with him. When you're risen with him, your spirit is with him. When you're risen with him, your thoughts are with him. When you're risen with him, you want encounter with him. And we talked on, uh, I think it was yesterday or last night in our midnight prayer, uh, we had a chance to explore the scriptures again. And, um, uh, in this case, excuse me, we want to see, we want to see what does it mean to get into a place where you can see Jesus as Jesus had a chance to see Father. Jesus says, I do those things that I see my father do. Uh, and uh, I got visual. I have a visual on my father and I do those things that I see my father do. We want a visual on him. And, and, and in this case, what a what a beautiful setting. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where? Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Father, give me a visual. Give me insight. Give me to know what it's like to be sitting on the right hand of the Father. I know this is a place, that this is a special place for your son Jesus, but give me insight. Give me the opportunity to behold it. Give me the opportunity to come before the throne of God. Give me the opportunity to see it so that my mind would be there, my spirit would be there. 
if ye then be risen. This is not for everybody. I understand. This is not for everybody. This is not for those who are yet in sin. This is not for those who do not know the Lord. This is not for those who have not surrendered their life to him. But if ye then be risen with Christ, it is okay to seek those things which are above. And he tells us to seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Uh huh. So seek those things which are above where Christ, that's the location, that's the locale, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Father, I, I want to behold the face of your son. I want to behold how he interact with you. I want to behold Jesus at the right hand of the father. I want to uh, give me a ringside seat. Allow me to see this in 3D. Allow me to see this in the realm of the spirit. Allow me to understand it. I don't want to guess about it. I want to know about it. I want to have had encounter with you. Father, give us encounter. Encounter encounter, encounter. What is it like being in your presence? What is it like? I, I, I know we, we say we want to walk around heaven all day and just sing and happy and just glee and just, and, and, and do all these wonderful, happy things. And yeah, a happy place and just so marvelous, so wonderful, so blissful. Uh, I, I don't really think that they have good encounter. I I, I, I don't. I, I, I believe it's more to it than that. I believe it's more to it than that. See those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection. I've got to, I've got to do this. Nobody's going to do this for me. The Bible is not going to do this for me. Even the Holy Ghost is not going to do this for me. I've got to do this myself. I've got to bring myself and set myself at a place, set my mind, set my thoughts, set my re uh, uh, my psyche, set everything that I can set. I've got to become the watchman of my mind. I've got to become the watchman of my thoughts. I've got to be the one that pull out the weeds and pull out the wickedness and pull out the evil of my mentality. And I've got to set it like I'm setting an alarm clock. Set it. Like I'm setting a, a, a guard to guard a, a, a sacred tomb. I've got to set it like I'm setting security guards to guard a, 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 a certain entry point. Got to set it. Intentionally go out of my way to get up early in the morning and set myself at the entry point of hearing him. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord, allow me to set it. Yeah, set your affection on things above. That's it. That's where it's got to be. Can't be in the gutter. Set your affection. Set the thing that you are moved with. Set the uh, set set that thing that you are so consumed with. Set that thing that you are so uh, uh, taken by. That thing that you like. Your desires. Set your affection. Your intimate moment on things above. Yeah, make an intimate moment out of the things above, not on the things of the earth. We we want to become so inundated with the things of the world. Affection by people, affection by money, affection by food, affection by, by, by a large crowd of people. But no, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Check this. Ye are, for ye are dead. That's why I'm not telling you to mortify it. Not there. For ye are dead. Ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Let me say that again. Ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The things you've been through doesn't mind you no more. You, in other words, you don't mind the things you've been through no more. You don't desire where you've been. You don't desire the pain of it, the, the, the arrogance of it, the, the intimacy of it. You don't desire those things anymore. You've been there. You've, you've been there. You've been in your past. You've lived there. You have residency there. You have address there. It is your past. 
Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For ye are dead, not were dead. Ye are dead. You are dead. You didn't come alive, so you are dead, not were dead. Were dead, you, you, you. It was a time that you were, but now that you're not. No, you are dead. And your life, your life is hid with Christ in God. I know you're fretting things. You, you, you're, you're being fearful of things you don't need to be fearful of. You, yeah, you're, you're panicking over things you don't need to be panicking over. You, 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 you've, you, you, you've taken your concern out of the hand of God and you placed it in yourself and you're fearful. Why would you be fearful of a thing that you're in his hands? If you're in the hands of the master, why are you fearful? If you're in the hand of the master, why are you awake? Why are you living? <laughs> the scripture says you are dead. Dead things. You, 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 you can. <laughs> dead. James Williams is dead. Stephanie Bush talks about James Williams. Slap James Williams. Pinch James Williams. Cut James Williams. Uh, 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 stabs James Williams. There's no movement out of James Williams. Why? Because James Williams is dead. He's dead. James is dead. You don't get a response out of that. Not should. It's not that you should get a. You, you should not get a. No, 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 no. When you're dead, you're dead. You don't get a response out of what is dead. No matter what you talk about, no matter what the conversation is about, if it's dead, it's dead. You don't get a response. You, you don't get a movement. You don't get a, you, you, you don't get a, uh, you, you do not get a pulse. You do not get a heartbeat. Your, 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 your pulse doesn't run rapid because something triggered you. You're dead. But ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. And so therefore your faith, your mind, your thoughts must tell you, no, I am in Christ. I am in the greatest protector of all mankind. I am the, in the one who can protect anything and will protect me. And as long as I am in his hand, he got me. As long as I rest in him, he got me. I need not fear. I need not panic. No one bigger than him. No one stronger than him. No one can uh, 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 cause him to fear. No one can, 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 can have the advantage over him. No one have the upper hand over him. So when you're really dead. Now, if you're faking death, that's different. Diamond. Diamond, if you're faking death, you can talk about somebody's mama and you're going to get a reaction. If you're faking death, they can talk about you, talk about a brother, talk about a sister, talk about a plate a dozen. And if they're faking death, you're going to get a reaction. But when you're really dead, it doesn't bother you no more. Why? Because you're not even there. You, you, you're not even, you, you're not there. But how can you not be there when you're there? How can you not hear this? How can you not hear what they're saying? How can you not feel what they're doing? How can you not involve yourself with what people are doing? Why? Because you have set your affections on things above. If you then be risen with Christ, you seeking those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God and you have encounter with him and the encounter that you get from being in his presence you don't mind earthly things. Earthly things does not move you. You set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. And because you are in a, in, in a heavenly mindset, because you are above and not beneath, because you are a, a, a lender and not a borrower, it does not bother you with what they're saying. You're not, uh, uh, you're not in sync with the, with the language. You're not in caliber with them. They are not of your caliber. I'll say that again. They are not of your caliber, Rosemary. They are not of your caliber. You are cut from a different fabric. And that's why it doesn't bother you. Why? Because what made the cutting of you, the cutting of you when you gave your life to him, that, that, that caused you to be a standout entity. You're not of them. You're not of the world. No, no, you're not of that. You are dead 
and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, if you're faking it, you're going to get a pulse. You're going to get a heartbeat. You're going to get some cussing, some, some lying. You're going to get some all kind of things from that one. Yeah, from that one. Now, check this. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hold up. Now, you mean to tell me I've gotten so caught up into the moment of being in his presence that I got to come back to the earth? Well, now that I've come back to reality and come back into the earth reality today, it's not the heavenly reality, not heavenly reality, but the earth reality. Now that I've come back to earth, it's okay to wait. I don't mind waiting now. I don't mind waiting for him. I, I don't mind waiting. And while I'm waiting with him, I'm not. Uh, while I'm waiting for him, I'm not going to become inundated with the world. I'm not going to become inundated with the things of the world. I'm not going to let what the world do plague me. I'm not going to let what them say, what, what the world say, influence me. I'm not going to let it anger me. I'm not going to let it have the upper hand over me. I'm not going to let it do me in. Why? Because no, 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 no. Even though. Even though people can hurt you, people can violate you and all of that stuff, but I have set my affections on things above. I have set my mind where he is. I am observing him. Jesus had to do that when he was on the earth. And in order for him to articulate a word to us, in order to him to, for him to give us a word and help us, he said, I do only those things that I see my father do. Not that I saw what he was doing, but that I see my father do. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in full effect of him. I am, I have a full visual on father and I see what father is doing and I'm going to do what he's doing. I'm not going to do what the world is doing. See, that's letting you know right there that your affection is on father. And not on people. Your affection is on uh -huh, his presence and not on people. Because when your affections are on people, you, you're going to get consumed with what they're consumed with. Bother with what they're bothered with. Fear what they fear. When your mind is on people. Yeah. But when your mind is on heavenly things, when your mind is on Christ who's sitting at the right hand of God, you set your affections there on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead and your life is here with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That right there is a faith that you don't tamper with. That right there, verse 4, is a faith that you don't move. That's a sacred power line. Let me put it that way. Number 4 is a sacred power line. It's a sacred power line like a junction box. And, and there are some switches. There are some switches in the junction box. You know, you, you can flish them on because the power went out. And you can go to the junction box and you can switch it on and switch it off. But then there are certain switches that you don't move. You don't know. No, leave that one right there. James Jordan, man of God, I see you. And, and, and thank God for you. Thank God for what you're doing there. Amen. Keep keep the work that you're doing, sir. Keep 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 doing it, man of God. Keep preaching faith. Keep talking about Jesus. Amen. We love you, and it's an honor to have you here with us on today. Amen. But on that power line, on that power line, when you go into that junction box, if you're unlearned, unskilled, you might touch the wrong switch, and that switch may light you up. But when you go to the power box, you're going to have great respect for it. You go, you go, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. I need to make sure that I'm touching the right thing, uh, that I'm going to hit the right switch. And and then there are there, there are people who, uh, um, call them, they, they, they work with electricity, and they have long poles, long poles, and they have the gloves, and they have certain boots, and they have certain outfits to handle the pole with. You don't just grab the pole with your bare hands and just do whatever you want to do. No, you've got to become grounded. You've got to make sure you have the right insulation on, uh -huh, that all of this stuff so that it doesn't come back and zap you. And then they reach this long pole up un until a high uh, place and, and they found a capacitor and then they're able to make sure they got the right one. And, and, and then they hook the, the pole into it and then they snatch it back. Why? Because now they're breaking 
current to it. They're, they're breaking it. And then sometimes they have to get back and, and, and find the little lever and, and put the long pole into it. And when they do, they want to make sure that they jolt it in place. When they do, electricity, thousands of voltage may pop from it. And, and, and you'll see the, what look like lightning come <laughs> from the thing. But if you don't know what you're doing, that's right. You don't have respect for it. But when you know what you're doing, you have respect for live current. And when you understand what God is doing and what Jesus is doing in the presence of God, our father, you respect that. And when he allow you into his presence, you respect the fact that he have allowed me in his presence. He have allowed me to have a visual on him. He have allowed me to observe what he is doing in the heavenlies. He have allowed me to see the beauty of his wonders. Jesus says, I do those things that I see my father doing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to have a visual on father, a visual on his son. And you have great respect for him. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You don't let nothing tamper with that power line right there. And so I look at verse four as a power line. And on that power line, you put do not disturb. You do not disturb my faith. You do not disturb this faith. This is my faith. This is my power line. And I will let nothing separate me from this right here, this belief. I will let nothing play in a toy with what I believe here. This right here is going to be the reason I get up. This right here is going to be the hope that I live. This right here is going to keep me grounded. What is it? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. I've got to remember that. I've got to stick, stay on that. I've got to keep that. Because that's what's going to keep me. All this stuff being wishy-washy, being double-minded, double-tongued, and, and, and everywhere, unstable, you know, and you, that's not going to get you. You're not anchored. You, you don't have faith when you're unstable, but your faith is what's going to keep you solid as a rock. Your faith is what's going to anchor you. Your faith is what's going to say, not, not now unto him that is able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. <laughs> you know, why? Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. That's what's going to keep you there. When you can read verse number four and, and you get happy reading over verse number four, folk look at you like you done lost your mind and you're getting happy over verse number four. Why? Because you have insight, insight because you've tapped the power line and this is your faith and your confidence. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You don't want to twist that. You don't want to miss that. You don't want to leave that. You don't want to abandon that, but you want to keep that right there. That's not something you want to say, I'm going to lay down my salvation and I'm going to give you an uppercut. I'm going to curse you out and I'll come. No, the devil is a liar. You don't let the devil play with that right there. You don't let the devil play with that security. This is a security for those who are in Christ. If you're not in Christ, then no, they're going to do whatever they want to do with it. And so here it is. Here it is, people of God. I told you. I told you. This, this is the word. This is, this is it right here. So when the things you're trying to do, when the things you're trying to kill won't die, leave it and mortify it. When the things uh, you've been trying to kill won't die, leave it <laughs> and mortify it. So... In verse number five, it said, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And I used to always thought that that meant to kill it, to just bury it. But after scrutinizing that word, after really looking at that word, that is not what it's saying. It does not say kill it. It didn't say to kill it. It didn't tell you to kill it there. Why? It, why is it not telling you to kill it? Because you're already dead. But it tells you something else. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Let's look at mortify, mortify. Come here, mortify. What is the meaning of mortify? To mortify. It, it, it means, it mean, so this mortify, there are mortified pastors. There are uh, 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 other things. But what, what this is doing here. 
It is to humiliate. It is to put in a posture to humiliate, put in a place to shame, uh, to, 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 to shame uh, as by injury or and it hits your pride. It, it knocks your pride out of whack. And, 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 it, and it deals deep down. It puts a javelin in your self-respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It puts a javelin in your self-respect. Yeah. Because that mortifying, that, that, that mortification, that, that thing right there, it doesn't care about your feelings. It doesn't care about your emotions. It doesn't care about all of that thing, but it puts a javelin through it. And then it brings about a shame. Why? And it's this shame that we brought up in, 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 in our second subtopic. The power of shame can give you the advantage over your weakness. Why is that? Because you have great respect for that thing that you are ashamed of. And so if you are ashamed to go out naked, you put clothes on. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 Cynthia Harris. If you're ashamed to be seen naked, you put clothes on. If you're ashamed, if you're ashamed to, 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 to have rollers in your hair in midday, you, you, you know, you, you, you take them out. If you're, if you're ashamed, if you're ashamed, yeah, if you're ashamed, to, you, you, you know, because you're smelling a certain way. And then, you know, people are going to talk about when you're smelling all sweaty and musty and you're ashamed to go out like that. It makes you wash yourself. This is the thing that brings balance. Hear me, somebody. This is the thing that brings balance to you. Because there are some things you're not going to kill. They are a spirit and you're not going to kill it. But what you can do, you can definitely mortify it. You can bring shame to that thing in you. And you can say, oh, God, help me. God help me if I commit. Oh, y'all don't hear me right there. Y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all don't want to. You don't want to prophesy that on your life. You, you don't want to speak that on your life. Father, help me. Expose me if I commit adultery. Oh, no, 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 no. Expose me if I commit fornication. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. See, see, see. You, you don't want to talk about that one. Expose me, oh God, if I, if I commit inordinate affection. The inordinate affection not going anywhere. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence is not going anywhere. You can try to kill it, but it's not going to die. Covetousness doesn't die because you said die. Fornication doesn't die because you said die. Uncleanliness does not die because you said die. There are some things it doesn't die. But when you learn how to deal with it, when you learn how to modify it, bring shame to it, uh -huh, when you learn how to expose it, See, oftentimes we want to expose it in somebody else, James Jordan, Pastor James Jordan. We want to, we want to expose it in, in the woman that had committed adultery in the open, but they didn't bring the man, but they brought the woman. As if that she can commit adultery by herself. As if that she can do this by herself. We're not talking masturbation here. We're talking adultery here. Y'all don't hear me now. Uh, uh, yeah. We, we're not talking masturbation here. We're talking adultery here. But they left the other person. They left the other person because if she doing this by herself, then it might be masturbation. But they didn't do that. They, they brought the woman, but they left the man. Why? Because it's so easy to throw the rock at the other person, but not yourself. And Jesus had to lamb blast them, say, he that be without sin, let him cast the first stone. And they didn't want to throw stones at themselves because they knew they were guilty. They knew they had problems. And they didn't want to go down that rock. They didn't want to deal with that one. And so here, here's, here's the thing that fornication not going anywhere. Uncleanliness, un, uncleanliness is not going anywhere. Inordinate affection is not going anywhere. Evil concupiscence is not going anywhere. Covetousness is not going anywhere. These things are not going places, but they're going to lay dormant right in the midst of you, right where you are. And so then you have to learn how to mortify it. You have to learn how to, uh-huh, have it available, have mortify, uh, have the, uh, 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 the mortician ready. Have the mortician ready to give, to, to give exposure to the evils thereof. Have the mortician ready to give exposure to the filth thereof. Yeah. See, we don't want to use it that right. Why? Because it exposes us then. It, 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 it shows that our hand have been unclean. It shows that we have been uh, tipping and dipping, ducking and hiding. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it shows that we are not the right, the right source. We, 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 we talk this, but we are not walking this. And then we pray, God, expose me. Expose me, Father. Expose me. Expose me. And then when he do, we don't want to be exposed. We, we don't want to expose because they'll go our career. They'll go our marriage. They'll go our loved one. They'll go this. They'll go our ministry. They'll go all these other things. They'll go my family. They'll go my son. They'll go my daughter. They'll go my job. They'll go all this other stuff. Why? Because you've been exposed. Well, that's why you need to have great respect for shame. I didn't, I didn't say nothing. That's why we need to have great respect for shame. Enough great respect for it to say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be shamed by fornication. I'm not going to be shamed by uncleanliness. I am not. I refuse to be shamed by inordinate affection because I'm guilty of it. I refuse to be shamed because of evil concupiscence because I'm involving myself with evil concupiscence. I'm, I, I, I'm ashamed to be a one, the, the, the barrier of covetousness. This, 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 this. I, 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 I. See, they don't want to look at it from that perspective. They want to look at it from another perspective, but not that perspective when it involves us. As long as it involves somebody else, yeah, we too would grab a stone. I'm going to grab a stone. Here, brother, uh, here, preacher Jordan, here's a stone for you. Here's a stone for you, uh, uh, Cynthia Harris. Here's a stone for you, Layla Anderson. We're getting ready to go stone Deborah Cooper. She is guilty. She, 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 yeah, that's right. She has involved herself in something that, 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 it, yeah, yeah, involved fornication, involved uh, uncleanliness. It, yeah, yeah. Let's stone her. Let's expose her and stone her. We, ah, Jesus. But we said that we are dead. Now, if you are faking it, <laughs> if you're faking it, if you're faking it, you're going to be one of them that's going to grab the rock. And you're going to want to toss it. You're going to want to expose everything but yourself. But when you bring that exposure to yourself, Lord, I am the one that messed up. Here I am, Lord. Here I am in somebody's bed. Here I am trying to get in somebody's bed. Here I am trying to get in somebody's head. Here I am trying to do the Watusi on, 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 on. Oh, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marry and trying to do the Watusi in somebody else's presence. The devil is a liar. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. You thinking that uh, a fornication is the only thing upon the earth? It's not going nowhere. It's upon the earth. <clears throat> it's, it's, it, it is, uh, it has been given a long sentence not to die, but to stay right among its brethren. Fornication has been given a long sentence, a long mandate to dwell among you. But here's the thing, it cannot dominate you. You know how to do it. You know how to get involved with it. You know how to flirt with it. You know how to let it dominate you. But the thing is, you don't because you discipline it. You mortify it. You give it power to bring shame to you. Uh-huh. This is what that mortifying is really do dealing with. To, 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 to make it abstinent, yeah, to, to, to really, really let it go in and, and throw a javelin through this thing. That if I am guilty of this, I'm guilty of this, let a javelin be thrown through it. Let, uh, let, let, let it expose, let it pain, let it hurt. Uh -huh. And this right here, you don't kill it, but it definitely wounds you, hurts you, and everybody else know of your defeat. Everybody else know of the posture that you walked in. Everybody else know that you, yeah, 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 you've involved yourself. Everybody else see you preaching on Sunday. They see you preaching on Sunday. They love that you're preaching on Sunday. But this right here exposes you in the, in, in, in the strip club with all your bands of bills that you're just trying to make it rain in somebody else's presence. That exposes you. It exposes you because you're not trying to expose it. But when you mortify that thing, you have great respect for it because you said, no, no, no. I have great respect for my life. I have great respect for the fact that I love God. I love Jesus. And I cannot involve, I cannot flirt with that. I cannot flirt with fornication. I cannot flirt with uncleanliness. 
Father, I will not flirt with uncleanliness. And then you start saying within yourself, Father, from today forward, from today forward, because then you realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, if I'm going to stay before Father, because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then you really start saying, because you see the light now, and you say, now that I see the light, Father, from today forward, don't let me, uh-huh, don't let me, don't let me, don't let me do this. You start seeing because it start telling on you. And, and here's the thing. If you walk, if you do it right, God will bless it right. If you, if you do it right. Uh-huh. Warning come before destruction and a halty spirit before fall. So this right here today is a warning. This right here today said, if you don't mortify it, it's going to expose that you were involved in fornication. You're involved in uncleanliness. You're involved in unordinate affection. You're involved in evil concupiscence. You were unclean. You were covetous. And all these things are idolatry. All these things are things that if you don't deal with it, you begin to idolize it. You begin to pacify it. You begin to feed into it. You want more of it. You can't get enough of it. You want more of it. It's like the thing that you idolize, you begin to feed into that thing. And it consumes you because you're feeding into it. Like you do the lottery. Like those people who do keno and the lottery, they feed into it. They keep buying the tickets, hoping that they're going to get a, a, a number that's going to hit. Hoping my number will hit. I need that billion dollars. I need that billion. I need that billion. So I'm going to scratch it off and see if I got it. And I'm going to hold my number for the night. I'm gonna hold my number because the night they're gonna they're gonna do the uh, the reading of the number and I hope my number win. They don't want you to know that they're getting they're playing the number. They want to sneak into the place late at night and and they do it on the sly and, and they'll do it however they do it. They don't want you to know it, uh -huh, but they've been doing it and still want to say that I'm in Christ, still want to say that I'm dead with Christ, still want to say that I've been risen with Him, but yet their hands is in the cookie jar of sin. And so warning come before destruction and a halted spirit before fall. But now that we've been warned, the best way to deal with the warning is father from the day forward, from the day forward, from the day forward. Forgive me. Blot out my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Give me a sanctified mind. Let me mind the things of Christ where he sits on the right hand of the Father. I want to put my mind there. Keep my mind there, God. Keep my mind there. Not in the gutter, but right where Christ is because I've got to be dead. I can't let what's going on in the world uh -huh, slow walk me down. I cannot let a uh, fornication get to me, adultery get to me, masturbation. No, no, no. In all, no, no, the devil is a liar. That is not my portion. Buying a vibrator for what? The devil is a liar. Got a, got a, 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 a night saying. A nightstand filled with tools and toys and gadgets and the devil is a liar. Like as if you're practicing something, you're ready to get down with something. But yet you want to be the first one on Sunday in the church singing and preaching and testifying. And you've gotten away with it. Gotten away with it. But you've gotten away a little too long. The warning is coming. Warning is here right now. Warning is here. Today, warning is here. So what do you do with warning? You get it right. Warning, you repent. And what you do with a warning? When a warning comes to you, it's not, it's not caring about how good you look, or how lame you look, or how wide, or how small, or how short, how tall. It doesn't worry about all that. Warning comes for you to get it right. Warning comes says, listen, if you don't get it right, you're going to be exposed. Modify it. Modify it. Let this mortifying, let it work for you, not against you. Mortify it. Allow it to be a mechanism in place so no fornication is going to bring great shame to what I'm doing. No, can't do it. Uncleanliness is going to bring great shame to what I'm doing. No, can't do it. In order to affection, no, it's going to knock me out of the will of God. No, can't do it. I, I, I will lose his anointing. No, evil concupiscence. No, get out of here. You're not, you're not a friend to me. Uh huh. To lose this grace of God. No, no, no. Covetous. No, no, no. You cannot hang with me. You cannot hang with me. 
Because every one of you brings shame. Every one of you bring shame. And every one of you, and it would be a shame for me to say I love God, uh -huh, but yet I am tipping, dipping, hiding and sliding. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. No, devil. Mm -mm. No, I've been bit. I've been bit by the serpent before. And I'm not, no, I'm not going to use you. I'm, you're not going to use me as a biting, as a biting sponge. Because you got bad teeth. And you want to exercise your teeth jaws. Uh -huh, and bite in me. To put your venom in me. To keep me paralyzed. To keep me in a place where I cannot move forward. I'm not losing this anointing. I'm not losing this ability to hear God. I'm not losing this ability to see God. I'm not losing this ability to pray uh -huh, life into dead places, uh, dead people rather. I'm not losing this ability to open blinded eyes, unstop deaf ears, command the dead to get up. I'm not losing this ability. Uh huh. No, 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 devil. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I'm not losing this ability to be able to testify on his behalf and represent Christ. I'm not losing that ability. No. For a moment of pleasure, the devil is a liar. Check it. And I told you which is idolatry. All these things which is idolatry. For which things sake. For which things sake. For which things sake. Uh huh. For which things sake. I want you to get it. For which things sake. The wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And I trust that you will not be found in disobedience. That this word will say, Lord, you know what? I was guilty. And, and I was I was slipping on borrowed time. I just never got caught. But after hearing this word today, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. I cannot take a chance. Father, forgive me. My mind have been there. Forgive me. My ego was there. Forgive me. My thoughts were there. Forgive me. I was not, my mind was not where Christ is. Christ sits on the right hand of the Father. My mind has not been there, but my mind has been trying to get uh -huh, Brother Mac to come see about me. M my mind has been trying to get uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, Brother Steve to come visit me and put a ring on my finger. Uh -huh. My mind has been on uh, on, 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 on Lisa uh -huh, so that Lisa and I can, can have some romantic time together. The devil is a liar. You got to say, no, 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 we're not doing that. I give, I, I give every right for exposure to locate me. When shame works for you, I'll say that again. When shame works for you, it's strolling right in front of your, in, your, in front of your face. When shame works for you, shame works for you. Shame is not trying to kill you. Shame wants you to be saved. Shame wants you to get it right. Shame wants you to say, Lord, 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 for you I'll live and for you I'll die. Shame wants you to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up. Shame wants you to say, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Because all of these things are idolatry. All of these things will hoodwink you and get you pacifying and going back to that same old trough over and over and over and over and over. These are luring spirits. These are things that lures. These are things that holds you bound. These are things that keep you from being anointed. These are the things that keep you from operating in the will of God. Thank you, man of God. The man of God said, as we say, uh -huh, at, at, at Genesis Church of God in Christ, word works on me. Word work on me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I like that. Word work on me. I like that. Word work on me. <clears throat> and that's what we are saying right here. Word work on me. That's what we need the word to do. Work on me. Work on me, a word of God. Work on me. That's right. Work on me. The Lord says that God, God is spirit. They that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. So when you've been living a lie all this time, it's not affecting you. You're not shamed by a lie you, you, because, you, you know, you're always trying to cover it up. You're trying to cover up the shame. You're trying to cover up where you've been. You're trying to cover up all these things. But when you can just simply say, Lord, I messed up. I, I was there. 
I was the fornicator. I was the unclean. I, I was operating in uncleanness. I was operating in inordinate affection. I was operating in evil concupiscence. I was operating in covetousness. And all these things are idolatry. And all these things are the things that want to hook me. They want to hook me. There's, there's a hooking spirit. These are the things that want to gain dominance of my life. Yeah. This have been, uh, these things have become a fetish to me. You hear me? Hear me? These things have become a fetish to me. And, and these are the things we have to say before God. Father, these things have become a fetish to me. These things have become a heresy. And I've been walking in that heresy. These things have made me become pagan. These things have left me ungodly. Yeah, and, and because I'm ungodly, it didn't say that I don't know how to go to church. It didn't say that I don't know how to raise my voice. It didn't say that I don't know how to look deep and look reverent. No, but these things is idolatry. You can you can you can you can say that you love God, but you'll find yourself in idolatry. You still go to church, you still clap your hand, you still sing your song, you still try to preach to people, but when you start seeing no result. When you are not seeing, because you're not going to see, uh, you, you, you think because the people have come that you're still anointed. But you, because you wave your hand a certain way. Because they're still gathered. People are gathered if you start preaching against uh, uh, something else. If you start preaching about uh, 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 orgies, and you're going to have a following behind you. If you start preaching some kind of sin uh -huh, that they, and you start telling people it's okay to do that, you're going to have a following. People are going to follow you. But are you man enough, woman enough to tell them the truth? Are you man enough, woman enough to tell them what the word of God say? Are you man enough, woman enough to have a conviction? Live by a conviction. And that you are walking in a disciplined life. I was in that place. I was in that place that I weren't disciplined. I weren't disciplined enough to love him right. I weren't disciplined enough to follow him right. I weren't disciplined enough to, uh -huh, to, to, to have his anointing upon my life. I weren't disciplined enough. But when you're disciplined enough, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you say, Lord, let your word work on me. Work on me. Work on me. For the things which sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And, and so that cannot be your portion. You're like, no, 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 no. I am not going to be disobedient, Father. Uh-uh. That, that cannot be my portion. Father, I rebuke every disobedient act, every disobedient thing. Don't let me be found one, in, in no, none of these areas. No, I'm better off dead, Father. I'm better off dead. Just let me. I'm not, I'm not talking about dead, whereas you're not effective to the body of Christ. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the scripture dead. The scripture dead, where you are dead with Christ. You, you, you are dead to those things that uh, uh, want you. For ye are dead and your life is hid in Christ. Verse number three is what I'm talking about when I say dead. I'm not talking about dead to the point that they have to, bear, they have to move you from the earth and they have to get you out of here. They have to call the morticians and, and the people have to carry you out of here. And, and this tells us something right here. This should tell every last one of us something. Especially everybody who believes that they are somebody. Each one of you who believe that you're all this. I'm all that. I'm all of this and I'm all of that. If you're so much, then how come they got to pay the undertaker to come and get you? <laughs> if you was all that, the undertaker will come for free. Let me have that body. I want that body right there. I want Cynthia Harris's body in my in my funeral home. Why? Because she's all of that in a bag of chips. The devil's a liar. And let you know you're not, we're not all of that. The enemy trying to play with our ego, make us think we're all that when we are nothing. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which, in the which ye also walk. See there? In the which ye also walk sometimes when ye lived in them. Who am I talking to? People who've lived in them. People who've done these things. You've, you, you've had your time there. You've been there. You've been there. You've tasted that place. You've tasted uh -huh, uh, 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 fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness. And these are the things that are idolatry. These are the things that held you from Christ. These are the things that kept you from Christ. These are the things that anchored you 
away from Christ. And they deal with, who, 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 do, who does this thing? Children of disobedience. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. I don't want the wrath of God to come upon me. I don't want the wrath of God to follow me home. I don't want the wrath of God to, 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 to destroy everything that I'm trying to build. No. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now, but now, but now, you thought that those were just the only few things that was binding you? These are the things that are idolatry. These are the things that holds you. These are the things that prevent you being anointed. These are the things that uh, are constantly going to come at you. But now, you also put off all these. See, now this right here, you put this off. You put it, put it, put it, put it off, put it off. But now ye also put off all these. Anger. It cannot be part of your groupings. It cannot be part of your inner circle. Anger cannot be in your inner circle. Wrath cannot be in your inner circle. You want the last word, but not only do you want the last word, you want to fight. Malice cannot be in your inner circle. Blasphemy cannot be in your inner, inner circle. You want to curse the things of God. You want to blast. Um, and see, and, and so you got to understand, people. Derogatory words is one thing. Blasphemy is a different thing. People think that they're blaspheming just because they use a lot of profanity. Because you use a lot of profanity, that's not blasphemy. Blasphemy when you want to deny uh, what God is doing. As to say there's nothing to it. See, just a subtle word like that. To just say a word simply like that, that there's nothing to that. I've, I've been in Christianity. I've, I've been saved before. And it wasn't all of that. I, I, I've lived a, a, a life. I used to go to church. It, wasn't, it ain't nothing to all of that. I, I, I used to preach the gospel. And it ain't all of that. I used to teach Sunday school. And it really ain't all of that. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. Using these uh, 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 derogatory words, you have a filthy mouth. That's not even cursing. That's a filthy mouth. But to curse is to is to hurl a, a something or on somebody that you don't want that on yourself. As to speak doom against their success. As to speak doom against what is life supporting for them. Something inspirational to them. Ah, oh, nothing going to come of that. Something simple is nothing is going to come of that. Everything you put your hand to do, nothing is going to come of it. That's a curse. Blasphemy. It wasn't nothing to that. I was in church, man, and... and, and all the stuff we did, we did this, we did that. It wasn't nothing to that. Be careful what you say. The devil don't want you to know that. Be careful to this. Use your words wisely. Don't let the enemy get you to a place that you start walking and doing things. Anger, get rid of it. Wrath, get rid of it. Malice, get rid of it. Blasphemy, get rid of it. Filthy communication, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And notice. Notice the ending portion of verse 8. The ending portion of verse 8. All these things here. Now I know there's an anger that you can show anger. Whereas you can actually get ready to fight. But all this right here. Is those things that comes out of your mouth. This is what he's talking about here. Everything here. Anger. Wrath. I know you can use anger in other areas. And I know you can use wrath in other areas. But what it's talking about here, all this right here are the things that proceed out of your mouth. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filter communication. Put it out of your mouth. Get rid of it. Get it out of your mouth. Keep it far from you. Watch your words. 
Don't let your words, don't, don't let evil words dominate you. I start saying, don't let your word. No, you want your words to dominate you, but you want the right words to dominate you. You want the right word to, to be in you. Just as it was in Christ. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And you got to understand that's who you are. You are who Christ is. Christ is the word of God. But you've got to come to a place of maturity so that you can be the word of God. Your, your intent should be to get the word of God off the parchments and put it in your heart. That's the intent. That you become the walking word of God. As Jesus is the word of God. And if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> if you didn't know, now you know. Now you know. The word of God has got to come from the pages to our life. Because the word of God is spirit. The Bible says it in the book of John. In the beginning of the word, the word was uh, made flesh and the word dwelled among us. Oh my goodness. The word of God must become live in you. Not become a parchment in you. Alive in you. The word of God must become so alive in you until it nurtures you when you are laying down, when you are thinking, when you are sitting, when you are just doing whatever you're doing. You've read word. You have fed yourself word last night, early this morning. You, you, you've read some stuff. You've read this book. You've read the scriptures. You've read the scriptures. and I don't want to say book. you read the scriptures early this morning in your devotional time. But now it's time for you to be at work. And it's break time now. The thing that should be coming back to you now on break time is some of the stuff that you've read. Or you pick up the book and you continue to read. But what you've read should be coming back to you. You're regurgitating that word up. You're regurgitating it up and it becomes alive to you. And then all of a sudden, you begin to have insight on what you've read. That the word begin to become alive and it begin to talk to you. Remember what you read earlier today? Yeah. Remember what it says here? Yeah. And remember how this? Yeah. And this is what it really means. Wow. Let me, let me, let me, where that scripture at? And then you start looking for the word so that you can go to it and peruse it again. This is what should happen on a regular basis. But you get rid of those other negative things. You get rid of those things and you get it out of your mouth. Because notice, notice. You also lie with your mouth. But lie, to lie, you can also lie in other words too. You don't always have to lie with your mouth. Uh, a dear pastor of mine, my pastor who, when I came to Christ, I came and I was uh, um, reared under his ministry. He says, you don't stop a liar, Stephanie Bush. You don't stop a liar, Lakeisha. You don't stop a liar from lying simply because you cut his tongue out. You you caught the you caught the liar, and you're gonna uh, 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 you're gonna you, you're gonna show him something, and you're gonna stop him from lying. So you cut his tongue out. That doesn't stop a liar from from lying because if you want to lie bad enough, he'll write the lie down. He might cannot speak the lie, but he'll write the lie down. Because that spirit of lying is still in him. So the lying spirit does not just only lie through a mouth, but it also lies through sign languages. It also can lie through writing the thing down. Because that spirit doesn't have to use his mouth. And then, then pick up nine so you, you see nine, uh, verse nine, uh -huh, a liar, he's not even in verse number eight. He, he, he doesn't have the right to sit with verse number eight because these here, they, they are evil. They are wicked too. But that liar, number nine, lie not one to another, a separate entity. Lie not one to another. You, you're not probably lying anyway because you're dead. If ye have been risen with Christ, uh, if you've been risen with Christ, if you are dead, how can you lie? Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off 
the old man with his deeds. And that's what it talks about being dead. You have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse number three, for ye are dead and your life is here with Christ. Uh huh. It, it, it's really verse number nine. It say, "Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds." That's what you've done. You put off the old man with his deeds, so that means that you are dead. It doesn't bother you. You don't have a reason. You can't lie. People don't bother you. You, you, you at a place that you don't allow people to bother you. You, you're at a place because you're so focused on Christ. You don't allow people to get up under your skin. You don't allow a situation to get up under your skin. You don't allow not having money to get up under your skin. You don't allow things to get up under your skin. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. You did it. You put off the old man with his deeds. You said, no, Lord, I want you in my life. And have put on the new man. That's what you've done. You put on the new man. You, you, you don't you, you, you don't you don't live this life, uh huh, uh, uh, uh tipping and dipping, uh, uh hiding and diving, and wanting to be saved on Sunday, but a heathen on Monday through Saturday. No, 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 that don't work. And having put on the new man, because you got to put him on. You got to put him on. People think that receiving the Holy Ghost is automatic. No, you got to put him on. There's some intentional things you've got to do to get him. I'll say that again. I, 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 I dare not mislead you. I dare not misguide you. I dare not give you false hope to make you think that he just come automatically to you and then you just live automatically doing whatever you're doing and then the Holy Ghost come to you but yet you're fornicating. The Holy Ghost come to you but yet you are unclean. You're unclean. The Holy Ghost is in you yet you still have inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetous, and you're operating in idolatry and you yet you have the Holy Ghost. No. No, my dears. No, my sirs. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. And have put on the new man. You got to put him on. That's an intentional move. That's a premeditated move. That you thought about this thing. Lord, I want you in my life. We have preached the gospel to you. And upon you hearing the gospel, you come to a place and you said, all right. I want this Christ in my life. I want God in my life. That's the premeditated move. I want him in my life. I've made the decision to follow Christ. I've made the decision that this, this is who I want to serve. I want my life right. I want to do right by him. You've made a conscious decision, a premeditated decision, an intentional decision to live for him. And I put on the new man, which is renewed. How? How is he renewed? How is he renewed? He is renewed after the image of him that created him through the knowledge, which is renewed in knowledge. This knowledge doesn't come by just um, sleeping. This knowledge doesn't come by just working. This knowledge doesn't come by just going to uh, uh, conferences you might be a vendor at the conference. It doesn't come because you went to the vendor, um, because you went to the conference. But this this knowledge come because you took the time to read, you took the time to study, you took the time to hear God, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of Him that created Him. Give me one moment. Please just give me one moment. I've got to check on my mother. Give me one moment. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Amen. We're going to get ready to wrap up our lesson for today. Just had to step away and check on my mother. Amen. So, amen. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. I have two more verses. We're going to get uh, three more verses. We're going to get through this. Who have created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Let me start off verse 9 again. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian or uh, Scythians, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. This is what matters most, that Christ is all and in all. And if you notice, this is where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision. None of this stuff matters here. None of this matters. What matters most is that you've made Christ the center of your walk, the center of your hunger, the center of your desire, the center of your thirst. You have made Christ the center of uh, 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 of uh, of your, your 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 thrive, your drive, your want for him. Put on, therefore, put on, put on something you do. This is it got to be intentional. You don't. This is not automatic either. Like the Holy Ghost is not automatic. This is not automatic either. You've got to put on, therefore. You've got to put him on. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Put him on. That's right. Intentionally work at this thing. Intentionally get to know him. You don't just, hey, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, and never read your Bible and never pray. Never read your Bible, never pray, but you go to church and you never read your Bible and you never pray. That's that's not, that, that's being ignorant. That's not being that's not being a child of God, of maturity. That's not growing in him. That's not growing in grace. That's wasting time. But get to know him. Get to be all you can be in him. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Put on, therefore, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. Don't be so quick to run out of mercy. Don't be so quick to be on the, on, on, on the, on the uh, um, ready to cut somebody down. Don't be so easy to write them off. Don't be so easy to just let them go. Don't be so easy to just, they just get on my nerve. They just, they just get on my nerve. They just get on my nerve. Don't be so, don't, no, 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 no. Don't be so thin skinned Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Put it on. 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 And, and, and verse number 13, our closing scripture, for bearing one another. And what does it mean to forbear one another? To forbear one another. What 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 does it mean? Uh -huh. To have patience, to have restraint, to put on restraint. Uh -huh. Because sometimes when you don't have that restraint, you just try to run through people and run over people, and you just yeah 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 no, mm -mm. yeah. Oh God, forbearing. For bearing, uh, uh, for bearing one another. Let, let me just look at this for a moment. Politely or patiently restrain. Uh, people can be impulsive, but you have to be that balance. People can be stern and, 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 and hateful, but you have to be that balance. People can be all the other things, but you just have to be that balance. You don't have to get on their level. Because their 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 uh, anxiety, I don't I don't want to call it their anxiety. I'm sorry, Father. 
that they're going through an anxiety attack. They're having an anxiety attack. And I trust it's not theirs, but they're having an anxiety attack. But you have to be forbearing. You have to be calm and not allow people to run through you and run over you. You have to become unflippable, unflappable, yet remain cool, yet remain patient, yet remain understanding. Yeah, because they're going through some things. Everything is not demonic. Some going through this time, what they call it, uh, uh, um, going through the um, menopause. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some having menopause issues, uh, Stephanie Bush. And if, if we're unlearned, if I'm unlearned, when they're going through menopause, I'm going to say, oh, that person, demonic. The devil made them do that. Just the devil. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm, 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 you see, I'm running from that one. I'm running from that one, Pastor Jordan, because, uh, uh, yeah, women would know more about that than uh, some of us. Amen. <laughs> so, amen. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, yeah, it, it's okay to be learned in, in a lot of areas, but there's some areas that there are some people who are just more specialized in than I am, and I'm just going to walk away from that, Stephanie Bush. I think you'll be more learned in that area than I am, so I'm moving on, all right? There's something we just want to call it demonic because we, we, we are impatient, and because I am impatient with you, and you come at me, you could be going through a time of menopause, and, and because I'm impatient with you, and I don't want to uh, uh, handle it right, and I'm quick to say that you're just demonic. You, you just got a devil in you. No, they're going through a time of menopause. They're going through a time of they're not understanding their body. The body wants to do one thing and you want to do something else. I, I know that people say, well, no, 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 it's still the devil, the devil. Okay. All right. Uh, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm doing, right? Okay. All right. I'm not going to. All right. That's right. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Make it, make forgiving one another easy. Make it a quick thing to forgive one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Don't hold on to that thing. Get rid of it. Learn to get rid of it quickly. In Jesus' mighty name. Listen, I've got to go. My time is up. But I thank you for this time that you've spent with me. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you, Father, for leading us and guiding us and, and, and speaking with us here and speaking us, speaking to us and uh, causing us to know that our life is in your hands. Our life is in your hands. Father, we don't want it to be nowhere else but in your hands. So I ask of thee, Father, orchestrate our life. At this place, at this juncture, I can't speak for everybody. At this juncture, Father, orchestrate my life. Orchestrate my life and cause my life to become hidden in you. That I am dead. I am dead. Father, allow me to live the spiritual reality of that, that I am dead. I have become inundated with the cares of this world. I've become inundated with things and people and the pledges of this life. I have become so inundated with it. So Father, forgive me. Help me to remember that when I set my affection on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, I have no time to think about people. I have no time to think about their pleasure uh, and their weaknesses and their fears and, and, and the thing that they've involved themselves with. That I need to focus on you that as I focus on you, Father, that I hear my assignment. I'll know my assignment. You will give me the assignment to the world of what I need to do. And I cannot be distracted by people. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me. Forgive me for walking in sin. Forgive me for walking in wickedness. Forgive me for being evil. Forgive me. Forgive me for when I have not mortified things. I was trying to kill them. And they kept coming back. I was trying to kill certain things, God. But help me to realize when the things I was trying to kill won't die. 
What do I do? Leave it. Mortify it. Father, help me to realize. Help me to realize. Help me to realize. Wait a minute. Change strategies. Change strategy. You say resist the devil and he will flee. He will flee. I don't even have to kill him. He will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. At time we're trying to kill the devil and kill his agents and kill his demons. Resist the devil and he will flee. When we no longer give a pulse to the devil's activities, when we no longer show a sign of life to the devil's activities, he will flee from us in the name of Jesus. Father, we've been having a pulse with everything the devil is doing. We've been having a pulse there. Yeah, whatever it pleasured him has been pleasuring us because we've been having a pulse there. We pray now that thou, God, will help us. That we would lose our pulse to those things that are worldly. We lose our pulse to those things where you brought us out of it. We're dead to those things. We won't show any sign of a pulse or a heartbeat. For the only heartbeat, the only pulse we'll show where Christ sits on the right hand of Father, that we'll set our affection there. We'll get a pulse there. We'll get a pulse there. We'll get a heartbeat there. But everything else, Father, if it's not about you, help us not to generate a pulse. Don't let us generate a pulse. It is not, it is not our portion. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this people. Thank you for this day. Thank you for what you're doing. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. And we give you praise for it even right now. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank God for each one of you here being with us today. And I just want to say... If we bring this to a close, this Bible study to a close, go make disciples. Repent, of course. Repent and go make disciples. Repent. Of course, you've got to uh, mortify those things and go and make disciples. Do the work of the Lord. Do what the Lord has called you to do. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you all. Go in his strength.